Let me start by saying how much I love this movie. Thank it's you. One of my favorites of the year. I have nothing but positive things to say. Thank you. And I'm out. You have a fantastic. No, I'm joking. You too. <laughs> so I am curious though. Before I get into the film, uh, if besides the holdovers, mm -hmm. if someone has never seen anything you've done before, mm -hmm. what is the first thing you'd like them watching, and why? I would say High Fidelity and Dolomite. I think it gives a, a good roundabout uh, explanation of me as an artist, um, and that those were just really uh, pinnacle moments in my career where I felt like with High Fidelity, I was able to really push the bounds and allow to really just be free, um, which felt so good. And with Dolomite to work with Eddie and to be able to spar with him in that way, I'm very proud of that, both of those projects, all of them, but in particular to what you're asking, yeah, I would say those. I haven't seen High Fidelity, but- What? But Dolomite is incredible. Thank you, please go see High Fidelity. <laughs> I swear there's a lot of TV out there. It's it's very hard. During the holidays, please. Speaking of TV though- You're not I, gonna watch it? Uh, I don't know if I can, but I was just, <laughs> I'm being honest, I have so much to watch. No, I know, <laughs> it's overwhelming. Uh, but I will say that I also love you on Only Murders. Thank you. And so I have to ask you, what is it like being with that group? It is the best job I've ever had. And in regards to the economics of going to work for long hours in a cold warehouse in the dark, that is my favorite place to do that at. They are the best. There's something about them that is so inspiring. No, I know what it's about them inspiring. They are the age they are. They have accomplished the things they have accomplished. Meryl included now in the mix and yet all three of them come to work like giddy little kids as if this was their first gig and that blows my mind and I just sit at their feet and absorb it all and take it all in they give amazing advice they're so caring and kind and they just are always like you know what can we do next how do we make this better how can we make it funnier are you kidding me? All the things they've accomplished? And they're still trying to chase the thing. And it's so moving, it's beautiful. So jumping into why I get to talk to you, obviously Alexander Payne calls and you, you know Paul Giamatti, all this stuff, you're probably gonna say yes, but what was it like actually reading the script for the first time and seeing how awesome this role was? Well, to be completely transparent with you, when Alexander called me, I don't, it's been two years, but I, I don't believe I had the script first. And I actually didn't know who Alexander Payne was when he uh, reached out. But when I did get the script, for me, and I don't think I even knew that Paul was connected, for me, the biggest thing was, it was a woman who got to be real and authentic and in her feelings unapologetically. And for that, for a woman and a woman of color, we do not see much of that in cinema and television. And to have an opportunity to depict that, I was like, absolutely, sign me up for it. Was there a day on, on the shoot, you mm -hmm. see what's being you, what's in front of you, that you had circled in terms of, I cannot wait to film that scene, or oh my God, I, I am dreading filming that scene? No, none of it. Honestly, none of it. Well, you know, and to it, Alexander prepared us in, 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 in a way that it just really felt like we were, tell we didn't film the whole movie in sequential order, but it kind of felt that way. And so with that being said, there was just an ease and a flow. We filmed the natural lighting, you know, in the real circumstances, there was no fake snow, there was no fake cold. It was very real, there was no studio, you know, so, it was, the world was all around us and, and encompassing us. And so I, I was up for all of it in that regard. There was nothing really that I was like, oh, God, I don't want to do. Or I guess I, that I really wanted to do. Uh, I'm not sure. I really just was really excited about all of it. I, I was I didn't dread the cigarettes, but the cigarettes became my co-star. 
in a way that I was, it, it's a whole thing with cigarettes that I don't think people understand, especially, it's different to take a picture of someone smoking across the street, and there's another thing to film a movie in which you're smoking. The smoke can go different places. It can get in your eyes. You're starting to cry where you don't necessarily want to cry at this point. It, it's a whole thing. So that was the only thing that I was like, ugh. Um, but eventually we became friends and we were able to figure, it's a rhythm. No, totally. Knowing when to drag it. Am I going to blow it out now? Am I going to talk? How am I going to hold it? Now I got this thing in my hand. Am I going to try and dare and do a scene where it's dangling out my mouth and have a whole conversation? It's a whole, nut, it's like an appendage. It's a whole thing. Yeah, I, I, I you're so right. And so many people don't understand. That is why there's only so many food and drink scenes in a movie. Because oh, yeah. all of that, it, it requires so much more. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That, that cigarette is complicated. But he was adamant about it. When I did get the job, he sent two large boxes of cartons of cigarettes to me. And he was like, get started because I don't, I don't smoke at all. Uh, and it, it's true. It, he was like, it'll tell on you. If you don't know how to handle it, how to finesse, how to pull it, that kind of thing, everyone will know and see it on screen. And so I had lots of practice, so much so that sometimes we would redo a take because he'd be like, mm, the cigarette upstaged you. Just try it again, uh, which is amazing. And I, and I was like, OK, let's get it together. Um, but no, it was wonderful. I'm always curious. I love talking to actors and I'm always mm -hmm. curious about the way actors like to prepare. Yeah. So hypothetically, you have a really big scene on a Monday. Mm -hmm. You know it's emotional or really it's going to re require a lot out of you. How early on before that that Monday are you breaking it down and thinking about it? And how much are you leaving to like in the moment? So what I like to do is I like to dive in immediately and do all the backstory and the homework, if you will. The text analysis, the background story, who they are, where they're going, where they came from before I even start filming so that when we now come to any scene, I can just play within the given circumstances and more importantly, really connect and listen with my co-star, be open and receptive to what my director is saying and not be bogged down by let me figure out who this person is. And I try not to amp up the big scenes because a lot of times the hype kills it. Sure. And that it doesn't go necessarily where you want it or in you amping up, you've actually been giving away the performance. It's like almost like a little balloon that you let air out. You know what I mean? Like you're leaking out the performance all throughout the day by trying to fabricate and be in this moment. So I actually do the opposite. I tell jokes, happy, cheery, watch cartoons, all this stuff so that then... I have space to go there. On that note, I really want to say one more time how awesome you are in this movie. Thank you. Love it so much. Have a fantastic day. Thank you. You too.